according to Gallup, it really looks like we're seeing a significant shift towards conservatism in general in America, despite the best efforts by the legacy media, the White House, the woke corporate America to promote a radical liberal woke agenda. According to Gallup's latest values and beliefs survey, conservatives now surpass liberals by a margin of 40 percent to 26% in terms of self-identification. Gallup's poll results indicate a noticeable conservative surge in comparison to the past eight years, where Americans were basically evenly split between identifying as liberal or conservative, specifically when it came to social issues such as abortion, LGBT rights, and the like. 38% of respondents identified as conservative when it came to social issues. Only 29% consider them liberals consider themselves liberal, that's a, that's a ten, near 10-point 10 discrepancy. Now, just a year ago, the split was even at 34% each. So liberalism's actually been going down in terms of uh, the cultural issues. This is the highest level of social conservatism that we've seen in over a decade, since 2012. Now, interestingly, for those concerned about creeping socialism that we've been seeing going on, Support for economic conservatism has also increased, with conservatives now holding a better than two to one advantage over liberals. So overall, Americans today, according to this Gallup self-identity survey, more Americans than ever identify as conservative. 40% identify as conservative, 31% moderate, and only 26% liberal overall. What if I told you there was a small group of investors who wildly outperformed the market? Well, there is, and you know exactly who they are. Corrupt politicians like Nancy Pelosi and establishment senators have been using their security clearances and exclusive knowledge to their advantage in the market for decades now. They know when sales are up. They know what earnings are going to be. They know about legislation, incoming Fed changes, you name it, a whole host of other inside baseball tips that gives them an unfair advantage when picking stocks. When these big wigs make moves, odds are they know something. But thanks to a little known SEC database, guess what? We can see what and when these people are buying. Not only do we get to see it in real time, but we get to piggyback on their trades to gain the same advantage for ourselves perfectly legally and ethically. My friend Ross Givens has been tracking insider trading for years, and his recommendations have led to investment returns of over 200%. Some have hit as high as nearly 1,500%. And according to him, there's no better way to beat the market. Now it's your turn. Click on that link below right now and learn how you too can learn to trade like Pelosi. Click on that link and learn how to gain an insider advantage for yourself. Now, this news is coming on the heels of a report from Politico that highlights the growing concern over young voters decreasing identification as Democrats and the radical implications that has for Biden's reelection. John Della Volpe, a former pollster for Biden's 2020 campaign, he's been sounding the alarm uh, quite very, very concerned, emphasizing the need for Democrats to take immediate action to address the trend among young voters to base, that, are, that are basically abandoning the Democrats as we speak. According to Della Volpe, voters under the age of 30 today are less likely to align themselves with the Democratic Party as compared to just a couple of years ago, the spring of 2019. Instead, more voters now than ever consider themselves independent and fewer perceive politics really as a meaningful avenue for creating change. They've just been com completely disappointed over and over and over again by the Democrats. And so they're basically bowing out. Now you know why Biden is intent on getting you to pay for college student loans. <laughs> you don't vote for him, but young people normally do, or at least they did. And that's the problem, right? As long as you're a reliable voting constituent, they don't care about you. But now that they're losing younger voters, now they're trying to do everything they can to woo them, that to seduce them back. But again, I don't know if it's going to work because this is all part of this larger trend of the Democrats hemorrhaging voters. Look at this one. We've been talking about this a lot. Axios is reporting that Biden is losing ground fundamentally with the non-white working class. 
I mean, we've, this is extraordinary. We've been talking about this in a number of videos. Biden is losing the non-white working class voter. Get this. Obama won non-white working class voters by a whopping, get this, 67 point margin in 2012. He pummeled Romney by nearly 70 points with non-white working class voters, Latinos, blacks, et cetera. In 2020, we already saw that extraordinary margin shrink, but was still considerable. Biden beat Trump with this, this uh, voting constituency uh, by 48-point margin. This is among non-white working class voters. Now, according to the latest New York Times Siena poll, okay, Biden's lead over Trump with this once overwhelming Democrat constituency. Again, keep in mind, 2012. Right, just 11 years ago, 70 point margin. That 70 point margin has shrunk now, according to this New York Times Siena poll, among non white working class to just 16 points. 16, 49 to 33. The Democrat margin for winning the non white working class vote has in 11 years fallen from 70% in 2012 to now just 16% today. It's a 54-point implosion. Now, of course, this comes on the heels of the Democrats having lost the white working class vote, which was once one of their most loyal constituents. Again, if you're a regular to this channel, you know that in 2016, there were nearly 200 counties in Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, Pennsylvania, that had voted for the Democrat candidate in every single election since 1984, often by a 20-point margin, that suddenly swung over and voted for Trump by a comparable 20-point margin. And it was because for many of these counties that have been suffering with globalism, this largely this, this uh, phenomenon uh, known as a global division of labor, where manufacturing and industry has basically been shipped away from first world nations and, and shipped to the global south to third world nations, all the while finance has been reallocated around first world cosmopolitan centers, leaving rural areas highly unemployed. I mean, this is what, this is what exploded the Yellow Vest uprising in France, right? Because uh, you, had, you had the working class in France uh, see all their jobs disappear from where they were living. So they had to go and commute into the city where all the jobs were because that's where all the finance uh, was allocated. Uh, but then all the finance being allocated, they gentrified the cities and and raised uh, raised the prices. So there was no work where they lived and they couldn't live, they couldn't afford to live where there was work. So they were commuting an hour, two hours each way. And the Macron turned around and slapped a fuel tax on them all in the name of a Greta tax of green tax, and they flipped out as they should have. And we're seeing something comparable here in the United States. We're seeing county after county of county suffering from deindustrialization. And Trump was and continues to be now the only presidential candidate who held rallies in Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, Pennsylvania counties. They had never in the history of our country ever had a presidential candidate visit them. And he came there and his, his theme was the same. The forgotten man and woman is, of America is forgotten no longer. The forgotten men and women of America are forgotten no longer. And so county after county after county, nearly 200 of them in Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, Pennsylvania, that had voted for Mondale, that voted for Dukakis, voted for Clinton twice, Gore, Kerry, Obama, all of a sudden to the shock of pollsters and pundits alike, defected and voted for Trump many of which by 20-point margins. We're talking a 40-point swing towards the Republican, but towards Trump. They don't care about where they, this is what, I, I, well, I'll get into it in a second. I'm getting ahead of this. This 40-point swing to Trump was so massive. We have data that shows Hillary Clinton, she lost the white working class so badly, even if she got Obama's level of black support, the black vote, she still would have lost. But now, now we're talking a major nightmare scenario for Democrats. Now we're even starting to see the non-white working class vote defect from the Democrats and move over to Trump and, incre and, and increasingly nationalist, populist 
GOP actually has their concern. You know, it, as it turns out, they're much, much more concerned about their jobs and about the economy than they are about woke identity issues, woke identity politics. And the data shows that just between 2020 and 2022, okay, just that two-year period, the Democrat advantage among white working class voters decreased by 14 points just in those two years. But again, if you look at that from 2012 to 2022, in that 10-year period, it decreased 33 points. And now with this New York Times Siena poll, it looks like that loss is upwards of 50 points. So all of this is to say that we have a number of indicators showing that the Democrats are indeed imploding, again, at least at the state level. And once we're finally able to, you know, have a blowout federal election, once we're finally able to overcome the Democrats' electoral shenanigans, that may be it. That may be the final nail in their coffin as a viable political party for the foreseeable future. That may be the election that Rush Limbaugh was looking forward to and pointing us to all throughout his 30-year radio career. That one election that is going to permanently crush the Democratic Party into a permanent minority status. So let's all get out there. Let's mobilize. Let's organize. Let's get the vote out, both on Election Day as well as the most massive ballot harvesting operation in history. And let's finish what all of these indicators are pointing to, the permanent crushing of the Democratic Party.